Welcome all. Uh, welcome to this course on representation theory of uh, general linear Lie algebra, GLN of C. So we will begin with the definition of uh, Lie algebras and some basic examples. Later we will move, move to the basic uh, definitions and uh, more uh, examples of uh, Lie algebras. So after that uh, we will only focus on GLN of C and its representation theory. So what is a Lie algebra? So Lie algebra is a vector space so a Lie algebra so let's denote it by G is a vector space over C equipped with an Lie bracket. equipped with a Lie bracket which is denoted by the bracket from G cross G to G. So this map satisfies the following conditions. So satisfying the following conditions. So first of all this map must be bilinear in each variable. So what this means so the Lie bracket is C bilinear map. So that means whenever you take uh, these uh, scalars for A comma B in C and x comma y comma z in g we have so let's look at how it acts on this uh, elements ax plus by and then take bracket with z so then it is linear in the first variable so that means so this gives a times x z plus b times y z. So this is what linearity in the first variable means. Similarly, we also have linearity in the second variable. If you take bracket x and a y plus b z, so then we get a times x y plus b times x z. And this should be true for all scalars a b and x y z in g. So this bracket must be a C bilinear map and it also satisfies two more conditions. Uh, so first one is uh, the skew symmetric. The skew symmetric says whenever we take a bracket with uh, some element of G with itself, so the bracket XX that should be 0 for all X and G. And the last condition which is more important condition, so which is called the Jacobi identity. The Jacobi identity says whenever we take three elements from the Lie algebra G, so then if we compute these elements, the bracket x, y, e, z plus the bracket y, e, z, x plus z x y so this addition of these three elements must be 0. So one way to remember this okay basically what we are doing we have taken these three elements x y z and we have cyclically permuted them to get other elements. So the first element actually corresponds to x y z. So now if we just cyclically permute this so then this corresponds to x, y, z, then this corresponds to y, e, z, x, so reading from y, e, z, x, then this corresponds to e, z, x, y. So if we take product of these respective elements, so then if we add them, then we should get 0. So that is what Jacobi identity says. So a Lie algebra over complex numbers is a vector space G with this uh, Lie bracket satisfying these three conditions. So the bracket should be a C bilinear map and it should be satisfy skew symmetric and Jacobi identity. 
So in this course, uh, we will only deal with the Li algebras and its representations over complex numbers. So throughout the course, uh, we assume that our base field will be complex numbers. Okay. So our base field assumed to be complex numbers. So we can also work over any algebraically closed field of characteristic 0. But uh, for to simplify our life, we can just assume that that field is complex numbers. So uh, if we take this skew symmetric and uh, Jacobi identity, we can easily see that uh, that can be replaced by the following conditions. So for example, skew symmetric is equivalent to the following condition. Whenever we take the bracket x, y, then that must be same as minus y, x. And this should be true for all x, y, and g. Okay, let's prove this. So what is the proof? So let's say that skew symmetric implies this uh, condition. So let's call this condition 1. Okay. So this condition, uh, for example, like if we compute uh, x plus y for x, y, and g, then we get the bracket x plus y, uh, comma x plus y, that must be 0 using the skew symmetric, using skew symmetric. So that means uh, if we just uh, use the bilinearity and then uh, write it down explicitly, then you can see that this gives exactly the bracket xx plus the bracket xy plus the bracket yx the plus bracket yy. But using the skew symmetric, we know that so this element is 0 and this element is 0. So that means this element being 0 implies this identity 1. So this implies the bracket xy is equal to the bracket minus yx. So 1 is proved. Now for the converse part, uh, if we take, okay, for the converse, if we take this x equal to y, then 1 implies the bracket xx is same as minus the bracket xx. So that implies twice xx is 0. But the thing is, we are working over characteristic 0 field, so that implies that the bracket xx is 0. And this is true for all x and g. So that means q symmetric can be replaced by this uh, condition 1. Whenever we take uh, multiplication of x and y, then that is same as minus of the multiplication yx. Okay. So this is somewhat important later when we introduce uh, further notions like ideals and so on. So now let us see how one can actually rewrite the Jacobi identity. The Jacobi identity, uh, like I said, one way to remember this, take this cyclic permutation of x, y, z and then sum it over them. Okay. So if I take x, y, z, so then with this x, y, z, so we can see that with this we have this element x, comma y z. So now if we just cyclically permute it, then this will be permuted as y z, y and x. Sorry, z goes here. Yeah, this must be y and this is x. So this is z, x, and y. So then this corresponds to the element y z and x. Okay. So x corresponds to Okay, this is not the permutation that I wanted. So 
So if we just uh, rewrite, maybe let us write it in the word notation, this is x, y, z, then this will become y, z, x. So then y, z, x, so that is the correct uh, word and then z, x, y. So this corresponds to z, x, y. So addition of these three things must be 0. So that is why one remembers the Jacobi identity. So now uh, one can actually rewrite this using what is called add x maps. Okay. So given x in g, one can define what is called add x of uh, add x map. So add x is a map from g to g defined to be y goes to the bracket x y. So note that the bracket is being C linear in both uh, variables. So this map add x is actually C linear. So add x is a C linear map. So in particularly we have what is called this add map from G to this endomorphism of G. So which is given by x goes to add x. So we will later study this map. So indeed, we will actually see that this is a representation of G inside this endomorphism of G. So this map add x, which is given by y goes to bracket x, y, if you use this map, then uh, one can see that uh, this Jacobi identity can be rewritten as follows. So if we rewrite this, the bracket y, z is equal to the bracket x y z plus the bracket y x z. So I will leave it as exercise uh, to see that uh, these two versions of uh, Jacobi identities are same. Okay, the bracket x y z is equal to the bracket x y z and bracket y x z. Indeed, if you think about it, so this term corresponds to this term and then this term actually corresponds to this term. Okay. So now how one can actually rewrite this for the adjoint add x maps. So if we think about it, all we are doing here is that we are applying add x on bracket y h. So in particularly, this is nothing but add x of the bracket y z. Okay, so this is exactly equal to, so this is just add x of y bracket z plus the bracket y add x of z. And you may wonder like what is the advantage of right, rewriting like this? And if you think about it, if you broadly actually think this Lie bracket as a multiplication defined on the vector space. Multiplication by definition, it is just a C by linear map from G cross to G cross G to G. So then you can see that uh, this add X is nothing but uh, derivation on this uh, Lie algebra G. So basically add X of bracket Y Z satisfies what is called this Leibniz rule. So from this one can easily see that. So this is indeed your derivation of the Lie algebra G. Okay. So for any uh, vector space A, okay, let us say A is a vector space equipped with the multiplication, equipped with the multiplication. Okay, let us call that multiplication A comma B goes to A B. So then your derivation, your derivation of this capital A is a C linear map which is defined from A to A such that whenever you apply delta on A come AB, the product AB, then we should, this delta should satisfy the Leibniz rule which says this delta of AB equal to A times delta of B plus delta A times B. Okay, and this should be true for all AB and E. 
so that is what derivation means okay if we take this definition of derivation for general vector space equivalent with our multiplication then we can see that uh, this add x indeed a derivation okay so this is just the second part a times delta b and then this is delta a times b so which is delta act on a a b okay so this is the best way of remembering the jacobi identity that add x is a derivation so now uh, let us see some examples actually arise from uh, this associative algebras so they are the most important examples so before that let us first actually recall the important object of this uh, course which is gln of c so first uh, we will recall the vector space m1 of c so what is m1 of c m1 of c we uh, by m1 of c what we mean it is the set of all n by n matrices over c so this is the set of all n by n matrices over c okay so now what one can do so we can take this as a vector space and uh, one knows that this is indeed a c associative algebra okay so because this m1 of c has a addition of matrices and multiplication of matrices and we also have a scalar multiplication of matrices so these operations make this m1 of c as a associative c algebra so we will come to the definition of general definition of associative algebra in a minute but before that uh, we can see that the following lie bracket the bracket a comma b which is given by a b minus b a which is called the commutator bracket so which is called commutator bracket and this makes this m1 of c as a lie algebra okay so this is a fact that m1 of c with this lie bracket is a lie algebra and this lie algebra is what is denoted by gln of c okay since we are only working over complex numbers we can actually drop mentioning c and we often denote it by gln c we often use gln to denote gln of c okay so now let us check actually this uh, m1 of c is indeed a lie algebra with respect to this uh, bracket that we have defined so it is easy to verify that uh, this bracket is indeed a c by linear map because this is defined using the uh, actual matrix multiplication on m1 of c and we have taken the difference between them so in each variable you can easily see that uh, in variable a and in variable b both in both variables this is c linear map so now we will actually check uh, the skew symmetric which is also immediate from the definition so if we take the bracket a comma a then this gives us that a square minus a square which is zero so it's immediate that the bracket a comma a is zero now only the non trivial part is the jacobi identity so let us check that so we will actually check the original definition of the jacobi identity so if we take the bracket x y z so then we get x times y z minus z y minus y z minus z y times x okay and this is true for all x y z in m1 of c so now if we rewrite this you can see that this gives x y z minus x z y minus y z x plus z y x and this is what this x y z means so now if you just compute uh, other uh, three elements so i'm just leaving it to, to see this so now by permuting cyclically x y z we can compute this y z x and then z x y so then what we get we get exactly y z x minus y x z minus z 
x y plus x z y. Similarly, here we get z x y minus z y x minus x y z plus y x z. So, now you can see that uh, so these terms exactly get cancelled when you add them. So, if you just add them all these terms, so then you can see that this term corresponds to this. So, they get cancelled and then this x z y that is getting cancelled with this and then this y z x actually getting cancelled with this and then z y x actually getting cancelled with this. Similarly, this y x z is getting cancelled with this and remain z x y that is also getting cancelled with this. So, if we add all these three together, then we are getting 0. So, this proves the Jacobi identity. So, that means this m1 of c uh, with this Lie bracket is indeed a Lie algebra over complex numbers. So, it is easy to see okay, that the dimension of this Lie algebra is actually n square. So, the dimension of this GLN is n square and we also have a very nice basis called the standard basis of m1 of c. So, we denote this Eij by the matrix which has on the ijth position 1 on rest of the entries are 0. So, indeed if we calculate the R as the entry then this is exactly 1 if ij is exactly equal to rs or otherwise 0. So, if we take this matrix eij, so then that will form a, so this is a matrix n by n matrix okay, with the entries rs the entry is 1 if ij equal to rs otherwise is 0. Then if we collect all this eij running over 1 to n. So, this will form a basis. So, this will form a basis of GLNC. So, this is very important basis and one can also easily compute what happens uh, between actually the elements of this basis. For example, the multiplication is easy to verify. So, I will leave it as exercise. So, if we take E i j and then E let us say k s, if we take e i j and e k s, so then you exactly get the coronal delta j k e i s. So, the coronal delta i j is defined to be 1 if i equal to j, 0 otherwise. Okay. So, this is the definition of Kronecker delta. It is a standard notation. So, this is the definition of Kronecker delta. So, now it is easy to verify whenever you take the multiplication of E i j E k s, then you get this uh, delta j k E i s. So, now using this one can easily calculate what happens if you take this E i j and then E k l. So, the bracket between them is nothing but delta j k E i l minus delta l i E k j. So, this is what you get uh, when you take the bracket between them. Now, using this one can actually explicitly determine the structure of this GLN C. So, that will be done uh, later. So, now we will see more examples of uh, this uh, subalgebra of uh, GLN C. So, they are naturally defined uh, Lie subalgebras. So, most important uh, subalgebra. So, here are the more examples. So, one can define what is called SLN. So, SLN is what is called a special linear Lie algebra. Special linear Lie algebra. So, which is defined to be uh, 
all the matrices in GLM such that the trace of x is 0. So, it is not hard to see that this uh, SLNC is a Lie algebra on its own by taking the commutator bracket, uh, bracket A B equal to AB minus PA. So, I will leave it to this exercise to verify that. So, here is the another important uh, uh, family of Lie algebras which is called SYN. So, SYN is collection of those matrices such that x transpose is given to be minus x. So, this is called special orthogonal Lie algebra, special orthogonal Lie algebra, okay. And uh, the, with the same commutator Lie bracket, it becomes a Lie algebra, indeed it is a Lie subalgebra of GLNC. So, what is, uh, how one can verify? So, we need to verify that whenever we take uh, x, y in SLN C, sorry, S, O, N. So, the bracket x, y also should be inside S, O, N. For that purpose, we need to verify x, y transpose is same as minus x, y. So, let us check this. So, the bracket x, y transpose is going to be x y minus y x transpose. So, which is going to be just x y transpose because transpose is linear x y transpose minus y x transpose and a b transpose is b transpose s transpose. So, that will give you x y transpose x transpose minus x transpose y transpose, but y transpose is same as minus y y transpose is minus y and x transpose is minus x. So, this gives us that minus y times minus x minus of minus x times minus y which is exactly x y minus y x with the minus n outside. So, this is minus bracket x y. So, this proves that whenever we take the elements x y in s y n then the bracket x y transpose is also there sorry the bracket x y is also there. It is easy to see that S O N is a subspace of G L N of C, and uh, it is indeed Lie subalgebra or Lie. It is Lie algebra on its own. Okay, so these are all some of the important examples uh, that uh, pop up in our course. So mostly we will be actually focusing on G L N C and S L N C in this course. So now. Uh, let us see actually some other examples and definitions related to general theory of Lie algebras. So, one can actually take any vector space and make into a Lie algebra by defining the trivial Lie bracket. And uh, if we take a Lie algebra G and then that is said to be abelian, a Lie algebra G is said to be abelian if the bracket x y is 0 for all x y and g. So, basically g is a vector space defined with the trivial Lie bracket. So, that is what called abelian Lie algebra. Okay. So, I will make this uh, very important remark. So, once we take this uh, subalgebra of m1 of c which is closed under this uh, bracket op operation, one can easily see that uh, that will form a uh, Lie algebra on its own by taking the commutator Lie bracket. Okay. So, if you take A which is subspace of GLN, okay, let us say this is a subspace such that the bracket x y is in A for all x y in A. So, then I will leave it as exercise, one can check that A with respect to the restricted commutator bracket is indeed a Lie algebra. Okay. Suppose, uh, for example, uh, if we start with A being already associative subalgebra, that means whenever x y in A implies the product x y is also A in A. 
So then it is easy to see that the commutator must be in A. Okay. But the converse need not be true that uh, Lee sub algebras may not always come from actually that uh, uh, associative sub algebras. But anyway, so if one actually starts with associative sub algebras, so if we start with associative sub algebra of GLN, then the condition that we actually have here is immediate. The bracket of xy is going to be inside A for all xy in A. So that means one can immediately think of the Lie algebra structure on this capital A. So that Lie algebra often is denoted by the bracket A. So this is the Lie algebra associated with capital A. That means the bracket is defined to be AB minus B. So now what the structure of Lie algebra tells us? So the structure of the Lie algebra tells us that how far this A is being away from commutative, Lie, commutative algebra. Okay. So the structure of Lie algebra bracket A tells us that how far A is being away from commutative. So, in, in algebra most of the time it is important to know like this information how far actually this uh, associative algebra is being away from commutative. Indeed, uh, this Lie algebra gives us a tool to measure that actually. So, the structure of Lie algebra. So, there are many classes of Lie algebra one can actually define. So, we will be defining that later. Soluble Lie algebras, nilpotent Lie algebras and uh, semi-simple Lie algebras, simple Lie algebras. So, from these uh, particular types, okay, if it is for example, semi-simple, then definitely this uh, Lie algebra is uh, far, far away, away from being uh, abelian. So that means the corresponding associative algebra is also like very much away from the commutative, being commutative. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you.